Welcome back folks to the Cactus Atlas. My name is Glenn and today I'm going to take you on a little road trip adventure from Boulder City, Nevada down to Needles, California through the heart of the Mojave Desert. Alrighty, so let me give you some information about today's itinerary. It's probably about 6 a.m. here in Boulder City, Nevada this morning. Hasn't gotten too hot yet. It is hot <laughs> later on, trust me. Um, today I'm actually departing Boulder City. I was here for another video and activity yesterday and I packed up the truck. I packed up Slim, who's here, and he and I are gonna drive from here through the Mojave National Preserve and off to Needles, California, an old Route 66 town in the Mojave Desert. And um, I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't really have a strong game plan. This is one of those kind of impromptu ride-alongs that I'm gonna film in between making other videos. I wanna stand here with one more familiar view that you guys have probably seen a lot this year. The Sands Motel. No vacancy, good for them. I don't know if I ever caught this mural before on the sands on the side here. This is beautiful. You got a mixture of everything you can do in this area. I came here to um, kayak the Colorado River on a different episode, which I did yesterday. The token bighorn sheep, you see lots of little sculptures of bighorn sheep around here. So they live out in the desert. The Hoover Dam, of course, and that's from the Hoover Dam also. And uh, I guess that's Boulder City here on this mural, but this is a beautiful mural. Very artistic town, I found, Boulder City. Alrighty, Slim, let's uh, head out on the road, buddy. What do you think? It's time to get this party started. What do you say? You guys are ready, aren't you? I know you are, so let's go. Let's leave the sands, buy sands. I will be back for the price. Um, I will be back. Well, folks, we are about to head <clears throat> deep into the Mojave Desert, departing Boulder City now. Google Maps is going to probably tell me in a minute to head south. And you know, like I said, in general, we've got several hours of driving today because I'm taking kind of an off the wall route through the Mojave National Preserve with the intent of making another video in between all of this other stuff. And yeah, that's going to be the itinerary and uh, there's so much I left undone again at Boulder City again. I keep coming here saying I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that, and I never do because I get so busy with other things, so that is not bad, I guess. We're actually heading straight towards Las Vegas. I can see the Las Vegas skyline clearly from here. You probably cannot, but I, I guess at least now you understand that Las Vegas is not far from Boulder City. It's kind of right around the corner. I kind of look at Las Vegas as Mose Eisley from Star Wars. <laughs> What's the line that Obi-Wan said? You won't find a, a town with more villainy or I forget the quote. That's how I feel about it. All right, we have now achieved escape velocity from Las Vegas. <clears throat> We're actually coming up on Prim, Nevada. Maybe the last grouping of casinos and stuff here in the desert for today until we get out of the Mojave, the heart of the Mojave. So I tell you what, it would only be proper to play what I feel is proper Mojave desert music. So still have about an hour to go to get to my filming location. And I don't know what the future holds, but let's just enjoy the ride. Now I see the familiar mountains, 
we're not far from the northern boundary of the preserve and peace and quiet and maybe hours without seeing people especially in this hot part of the summer but it looks like it's taking me to Morningstar Mine Road another one that we've uh, seen before but I do want to do one thing really quick because I've never done this before it's gonna be a, fir a cactus atlas first today and I want to do this because really this is probably the the meat and potatoes of the adventure today is gonna to be in this place this desert place the Mojave National Preserve and there you have it folks the uh, one of the official signs entering the Mojave National Preserve Mo Jave. If they put like an accent on the E, it would be like Mo Jave, right? <laughs> I just wanted to do that again on the off chance that maybe somebody that watches the video that that would bother saying Mo Jave instead of Mojave. I know I'm not stupid. Um, we'll fast forward to that time and not really get the joke, and they'll hear me say that, and they're gonna freak out, and their heads gonna explode. But yeah, this is the Mojave National Preserve. Kind of a cool sign. You see the trademark Joshua tree here on the sign in 3D. The Mojave Desert, the Mojave Desert, um, actually exists in several states. California, my home state of Arizona up in the north. We've talked about that before. We've, I've shown you Joshua trees in Arizona and uh, Nevada, I think, are the primary states where the Mojave is in California. I think this is the heart to me, the Mojave National Preserve. One of my favorite areas um, of all time, um, just because of the um, unknowns and all of the adventure and history and things that are scattered out in these hills and mountains. And you really got to seek them out. And even where we're going today, um, you have to have an off-road vehicle. It's a little treacherous. A lot of people get stuck in sand out here and have problems. So I see that as a deterrent for a lot of people coming out here. Um, and also the kinds of things that you really can seek out. Like I'm thinking like the Esperanza mine, the Morning Star mine, the Evening Star mine, Gold Dome Mill. All of these things we've done on previous episodes are these hidden gems out here that you really have to seek out. Having a four x four vehicle of course helps very much. Today, one of my locations, another mine and other things in a volcanic section of the park is my goal. So um, we're uh, four by four is definitely heavy duty tires are definitely needed or desired, I would say, or should be. These lower areas, I like them for the expanse of views here in the desert. But um, what I prefer though, is when you start to climb slightly in elevation and you butt up against these mountains, they're typically really lush, dense Joshua tree forests because the Joshua tree seem to like to be up higher elevation than down here in the valley. Down here, I'm just guessing this is probably creosote. Um, it looks like creosote. I could smell it and tell you, let's see. So all I do when I want to make sure it's creosote, I recognize it because we got a lot of this in Arizona now, is you can just take a pinch and you can kind of rub it between your fingers and smell it. And the smell you would smell smells like an Arizona rain. Um, and I've also read that it's a natural bug repellent where you can rub it on your skin um, and it's supposed to keep insects away from you. I've tried that when I've been hiking and I don't know, the gnats didn't seem to care. Um, but I've done it. Maybe I didn't do it enough. <laughs> but anyway, creosote's not that interesting. It's endless things like that. Where we get in deeper, there's interesting geology and other things. So um, there's a crow. Hey. They don't, they never respond to me. Let's get back on Ivanpah here and we'll uh, make our way down the road. All right, the current time is 7.45 a.m. and I just looked at the temperature here in my car, the truck, it's 91 degrees at 7.45 a.m. 91 degrees at 7.45 a.m. I repeated that just in case you wanted to know. 91 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> so I've done a pretty good exploration, I think, of the northeastern quadrant, maybe, if you want to think of it that way. 
although it's not really a circle, but um, of the preserve, you know, if you if you had this giant oval that kind of represented it, like the northeast section, Gold Dome Mill as an example of something. There's lots that I haven't seen yet, but um, to me, I have this is the spot that I know better. Where I'm heading today is the lesser explored thing, the southern side that connects back up with, I think it's Interstate 40? Um, something like that when I head off to Needles later. Needles, California. Um, and so I think I'm gonna, we're gonna be seeing, or you're gonna be seeing a lot of new stuff with me that I've never seen before. So there's the aspect of discovery today on this particular episode. Mile. All right, we got about 15 miles. I forgot that Morning Star I think is paved, but off to the right, there were many roads that go up to those mountains we saw. We're cutting between two mountain ranges now. And uh, that's where I was exploring last time was this whole right side of the road. We hit like two of the mines out there and I, I there's more that I didn't see. Uh, but yeah, lots of mines, old mines and old cabins and things like that over here and then off to the left somewhere is death valley mine which is another one we did long ago probably i would say to date my favorite is death valley mine one of my favorite i want to call it a ghost town but it kind of is there's still structures there um but with the joshua trees and all of that it's really iconic looking really photogenic stuff if you like old buildings and desert scenery to go with it so what I was gonna say is, you know, normally I'm a very objective, scientifically minded person. You know, the things I believe in require evidence, being able to measure uh, phenomenon and things like that. Um, so not really the most spiritual person in some ways, but um, when I'm out here in this section of the desert, I wonder sometimes, maybe I did have a, a life once before. Maybe I was one of the Mojave tribe or something that lived in this area. I just feel such a strong connection and draw to this this place that uh, I can't describe. And, and it never gets old. I always feel at home here. So there, there you go. That's my quick pondering of, am I reincarnated from somebody or something? Maybe a coyote or a some other kind of maybe a Mojave rattlesnake and I this was my home once and every time I come back I'm coming back home I don't know probably not but it's kind of how it makes me feel and then you might say well what about your wife Amy don't you love her don't you want to be with her of course I do and our cats too Mika and Miet um, you know I could never do that but I would say the older I get like if I were still single at this point in my life and uh, had nothing else going on and I could move out here and do what I do for my day job, I think I'd be a buyer. You know, I would, but then the home life I do love too. I like having that home base and uh, all of that. So please know that it's, uh, yeah. maybe one day I'll convince Amy. We'll get an RV or we'll just live in tents out in the desert, sleep under the desert skies. Amy's like, that ain't gonna happen, man. That ain't gonna happen, uh-uh. But it's just something that, you know, I've you know, I've got friends and family and people that inquire every once in a while about the stuff that I do. My mom, for example, I don't think she watches our channel, but um, every once in a while, like she gets interested and wants to come on a trip or something. And I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know if you're gonna have fun doing it my way, first of all, but more so than that, it's just, you know, I like to be in the zone and be alone so I can focus, but it's that being alone part. I just like, I don't know, it's no offense against people like my own mom. Although I'm toying around with bringing her on one of these episodes one of these days if she wants to go or another family member. But for the most part, yeah, it's just, uh, I think it's hard for people to understand the introverted mindset. Introvert, you say? You don't seem like an introvert. Well, the Myers-Briggs test says I am. <laughs> and I feel like I am. I can hide behind. I've got a... I'm not here face-to-face -face with people talking to you. Like, if I were doing this on a stage, forget about it. I have the safety net 
call technology here in between me and that, but man, this is turning into a weird episode, isn't it? My first destination right now is something called Valley View Ranch, and it's really, I don't even know what's there. It's not that I'm planning on showing you that. It's really the launching off point for my featured video of the area, which is we're going to take a break from this. Probably going to be filming for a couple hours today doing that. And then we're going to hook up after that when I think the most we're going to have the most fun on that part of the trip. So I think that's, you know, right now I'm just trying to get to where I need to be and taking you with me. Just hold tight because after that, we're going to have some adventure I predict today. I pulled over here. I was just filming and we drove down this old country road here. Beautiful Joshua Tree Forest here. I'm on Powerline Road now. This is the intersection of whatever this road is and we're heading down this way. And you can see this is the type of thing I was telling you about. You can hear the hum by the way of this electric plant. Now you know why they call it Powerline Road. The hum and crackle of electricity. But anyway, um, you got these beautiful Joshua trees and then taking this road, I'm glad I did. You see fences here because there's a lot of private property on either side and there was nowhere to pull over. Um, but I saw some really old wooden structures, presumably from prospecting and mining in this area um, or maybe ranching or something like that. I don't know if anybody still lives out there. I saw a couple trailers, but yeah, a lot of private property on either side of this road. And I'm sure some of this with the power lines is private, I'm gonna guess, but let's walk over here because I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about with the fire damage and stuff with the Joshua trees. So over on this side and surrounding a lot of areas, I think it's part of that really dense Joshua tree forest that got decimated by the fire. And if I turn this way, you'll see what I mean. I mean, they're pretty much all gone, all the way up here to this fence. And then if you look this way, you know, same thing, like beyond, all decimated and apparently it was the densest place and the best place to see Joshua trees in the park. Not that this is anything to sneeze at, this is awesome. So there's plenty of dense Joshua trees here. I'm not trying to make it sound like that, but it, it breaks my heart a little bit to be honest when I see things like this, but I don't blame anybody or anything because I think the justification for why they couldn't tend to this fire is understandable. I had to stop too, because the both GoPros overheated. <laughs> so you know what kind of day it's gonna be. Ay, ay, ay. I mean, these things kill me, man. <laughs> these GoPros, they drive me nuts. It's such a production to deal with both of them. And then they overheat, and then they become unpaired from the remote, and it's just a constant battle all the time. And it makes no sense to me, because, you know, they're in the car, in the air conditioning, not even facing the sun. So it, it's, a, it's a frustration. It's really a challenge. And now you know what I have to deal with to make these videos for you. Boo-hoo, right? <laughs> Alrighty, I am now, I got the GoPros back online. Both of them did weird things. Might as well not even complain about it anymore because it's expected. But you'll know the bane of my existence here on the Cactus Atlas are Misbehaving GoPros. Continue on Powerline Road for two miles. I'm gonna. I'm not on it though yet. So Slim, you know, you know my music and stuff. I know you and I dig it, and I just don't, you know, Captain Beyond. I just think it's so well written. That first album, it's almost like you can't listen to just one song. You have to listen to the whole thing, right? I mean, I believe there's scientific merit behind the idea. Based on my analysis of waveforms and how dynamic voltage changes can stimulate the nucleus accumbens amygdala and the cerebellum asynchronously, Captain Beyond's first album scores well in terms of high probability of enjoyment. Yeah. I'd say that's on the conservative side I mean, too. Dude, like I agree, like a hundred percent. Why do people not know about it, first of all? And why does Amy hate it so much? And when I share my interest, a lot of people just dislike that 
time of music, but it just doesn't make any sense. You know? My analysis concludes that they didn't succeed as much as some of their contemporaries due to poor marketing at the time, as well as a tendency yeah. towards... I guess, you know, I mean, sorry to interrupt, but... Oh, shoot, I, I didn't realize we were filming. Um, that was slim. <laughs> that was actually slim. I am working on something here and I've been doing some testing. So you're not gonna get a full dose of it, but it been thinking Slim wants to get into some narration potentially, and I'm considering it, you know? I don't know if he's, uh, I have to have him turned off so he can't really hear me. I'm doing all these tests, but we'll see. He likes to talk too much like me, apparently. All right, yeah, so that's probably very unexpected and weird, but just doing some testing and some calibration on Mr. Slim, who, like I said, he's sleeping right now. He can't hear anything that I'm saying, but we're considering doing a pilot at least with him. Not really convinced it's gonna be the right thing. I'm worried it's gonna be too cheesy, but you know. Oh, come on. What? Does no one wanna he's give on. me a chance? I think I've earned a turn after all the places I've taken you. Yeah, I'm Slim, I, <laughs> oops, I didn't realize you were Still listening. I can't uh, argue with you for that. So, um, you know, but we're going to do a pilot. Like I said, you know what a pilot is, right? I mean, I'm going to make sure. I'm an artificial intelligence, Glenn. You of all people should know the answer oh, to that. Oh, boy. <laughs> anyway, Slim, I'm, I'm really turning you off now. Okay, so thank you. Uh, we'll see in the future if we can use you. Goodbye. Never fails to impress. Even the burnt Joshua trees still have a memory of their former selves here. But a weird mix. Even this dirt road seemed to protect some of these Joshua trees on the right side of the road from fire. So I guess even like roads like this are little fire barriers to prevent the spread of the fire is my best guess. Half and half something called White Rock Spring over here. And I see what appears to be corrals for animals. And I can't really see over the top of my hood. There we go. What do I got here? This is interesting. I might get out and explore this really quick and see. Whatever this is, White Rock Spring, folks. Right here for your viewing enjoyment. <laughs> Okay, enough. <laughs> That's how I felt for the moment. Proof that man once used this, I'm guessing no longer. My best guess is it's a corral for animals and there's a spring here and they were collecting water for things to live. You could see people have camped here at some point long ago and now the weeds have grown up between the campfire ring. See how frequently this is used. And uh, yeah. 88, is that 1988? I don't know what this contraption is. My best guess, it's a cistern to collect water. What else would you have out here? Animals need their water, right? This is pretty cool though, I like it. I dig it. To be honest, I just wanted to get out of the car for a minute and alternate filming with different cameras because I can go from one to the other and hopefully not overheat them as much. But anyway, I, I see a lot of this kind of stuff driving through here, a lot of these old Probably from an era of ranching out here in the hot desert. Imagine that. That'd be a quite a thing to do. My, I'm wondering, was this all here prior to this becoming a national preserve, and they had to, whoever had to had this, had to relinquish it or something, and now it's on the national preserve. I'm not sure. There's a lot of flies here though in this area. Probably still looking for the cattle that once frequented this area. And you can see the desolation there caused by the fire up on the hill. 
Everything on this side, <laughs> once again, seems to be A-OK, -okay, including this fence. And everything right up there, gone. This little area kind of gives me the Joshua Tree National Park vibes of those granite boulders here off to the left. I think you'll see a few more up here, albeit the Joshua trees are burnt. I imagine at one time, if you wanted the Joshua Tree vibes and wanted to come out here, whoa, look at this, I'm gonna drive over a granite boulder right here. Whoa. Um, it probably would have been really pretty. Look how large some of these are too. Huge. Part of me just wants to do a full-time channel where all I do is sit on my butt in this truck and never get out on foot and just click, click, click and record, record, record. It'd be the easiest thing ever. I know a couple of YouTubers that work that way and I actually kind of enjoy it. Yeah, it looks like there's a ranch. It looks like it's still, there's still people living in it. But then there's these old buildings over here that are pretty cool. Um, very neat. I don't know if we can get out here. I don't see any private property signs on this side, Valley View Ranch. So apparently a working ranch still. And you got this barn and this old building here out in the middle of the dang desert. So I'm gonna take a look here. We're gonna explore on foot. Um, and then I'm gonna have to start my other episode. So by the time I'm starting to record this one again, it probably will be a couple hours later. Um, but then we're going to get into the really fun stuff, in my opinion, the, the highlights of the episode. So a lot of it's been in the truck, I know. So my apologies if you like to be on foot. Maybe my obsession with the Mojave Desert still comes from my enjoyment of Fallout New Vegas, <laughs> a video game. I just thought I really, maybe it's, or maybe it's what I said earlier, maybe I am... Um, Someone that uh, lived here in a different lifetime and even the video game was sparking memories from a time long gone. This is a really photogenic location actually. This exceeds my expectations. I literally was just trying to find an optimal spot to start a different adventure, a different video, and this was a good location. And I didn't even look at pictures of what to expect here, but clearly it's the kind of thing that you guys know that I love. So. Especially this really big barn over here. Which I don't know, maybe it's being used today, maybe not. The door's falling off. Let's take a look. It's hard to know how old this is too. Maybe it's not as old as one would think. The doors probably aren't, but you can see there's a water tank in this place. I can't even see what's on the other side of that. So that might be still in use today. Probably have to haul in your own water out here. But when the roof is falling off and it ain't worth keeping up anymore, the assumption is, is it's got some age to it and it's old. You can see some people have put artifacts out here, it looks like, and uh, give you a peek inside here. I mean, it's the kind of stuff we always seek out. You could see there was electricity at one point. There's a light bulb socket up there. This is some kind of workshop, I would say. Probably for the ranchers that lived out here. There's even plastic stuff in there. Maybe they still use this to some extent today. This over here looks like La Pièce de Résistance of Valley View Ranch. stuff up in there and just left it some modern looking buckets and things in there and um, some kind of nest look at that I bet you that's a some kind of bird of prey's nest a hawk I don't know do they have eagles out this way it's really cool that's a really good location <laughs> owl maybe I don't know what is that anybody have a guess I'm in my element here. 
But for me, once again, it's just all about the vibes, the, the aesthetic, the Joshua trees with old wooden buildings. The two things really pair well together. And there is an abundance of that still out here if you know where to find it. And now I found another one for you to come see if you desire. All right there, my friends, we are back on the road trip. I just finished making my other video for the day, the one that I had to interrupt the flow with this. Should be able to see a sign right there that says Lava Tube Trail. It should give you a hint. We explored the cinder cone volcanoes, the mining industry around that, and a lava cave all in one episode. And I came from that road that's right in front of us. And now we need to keep heading to Needles, California, where I'm staying the night. And we got many stops along the way that I want to make. Now I'm going to go the, a different way that Google's telling me to go back that way. Continue for one and a half I want to go out this way because I should be able to. And this is probably the more touristy way actually to go. So she's probably going to reroute me. Head south toward Aiken Mine Road. I think. I have no idea. But basically, if you ever want to come to the Mojave National Preserve and check out what's known as the Lava Caves, it was magical, to be honest. The, there are beams of light coming through the ceiling, and it was wonderful. Um, and nice and cool in there, like an air-conditioned home out in this hot desert. So um, this is the way I think most folks would come in. I came the opposite direction up Aiken Mine Road where there's a cinder mine back there. It's really sharp volcanic rock in places on the road. So I'd say cars, especially without heavy duty tires. Don't let Google trick you into going that way. Probably would regret it. If you're not prepared. So I think my general plan is just pending how I'm feeling here and there is you're gonna go with me for the ride. And I have two major stops in mind. The two major things I had on my mind. A, the Kelso Sand Dunes here, another major feature on the southern side of the gigantic Mojave National Preserve. And um, my only, I guess, second guessing or second thoughts about that are how hot it is today. And walking out on sand dunes doesn't sound really good right now, but I have about 45 minutes till we get there, just to give you an idea how big this preserve is. Um, Right now, at this very moment, do I feel like doing it? No. <laughs> no, no, no. I've been in the sun all day. Short of that happening, there's a place called the Topic or Topic, Topak Maze, which I think is like a geoglyph or geoglyphs left by natives in the area at some point, maybe in the last five, six hundred years, I think I remember. And we've never really explored geoglyphs and we've got a drone so i thought that would be cool and that's right outside of needles and then there's needles itself i don't know anything about it other than i think it used to be a route 66 town and now it's still hanging on it's kind of ironic i think because out of all of the crazy roads we've taken today through sharp lava rock and just random back roads and i don't even know if you can always call them roads back here in the Mojave National Preserve, the one road that is supposed to be like the most passenger car friendly is probably the most unpleasant road that I've driven on. Saying unpleasant as opposed to dangerous, it's just, just constant washboards. I prefer off-road, you guys should know that, but after hours and hours and hours of doing it, I'm looking across that vast landscape off to my left that you can't see and seeing all of the, uh, um, cinder cones that we drove through and knowing what's back there now I've created another map in my mind so this episode just doesn't become all sitting in the car I think we've gotten out a few times and seen some cool things um, I'm gonna just you know this is probably gonna be the view for the next 30 31 miles before we get to where I need to go and then uh, I'll hook up with you then I also want to crank the AC up on full blast. I don't run it when I'm filming on these things. I'm always turning it off and turning it back on. I just need to enjoy some coolness and relax from the last adventure. We'll catch up. We got a long way to go, so don't worry. Kel 
Kelso Dunes Road here. Heading straight down towards the dunes. There you go. Continue on Kelso Dunes Road for three miles. Well, there's some big dunes, I'm here to tell you. They look taller than the ones in uh, Death Valley. And if you want to go see that video, want to see me actually walk up a sand dune, that would be a good one to, to go check out. Mesquite sand dunes, you see, I remembered. Plugging all our old videos today. All right, we have made it here to Calso sand dunes in the burning hot afternoon. Oh my God, it's hot. Warning, excessive heat alert. Hiking in this area is not advised. No doubt, and don't worry. We're not gonna, we're not gonna be too hardcore here. Like I said, I think I've got a little bit of reptile or lizard in me and I can tolerate these things, but I was thinking of my grandmother who's passed away years ago. Uh, one of my grand grandmothers anyway, the one I was close to. And you know, she was a little Greek lady, very broken English. And uh, I know my brother and I used to laugh all the time, but her thing was when it was hot, she would do this thing where she was like, hub, 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 he's hot. Glenn, he's hot. Oh, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> that was her thing. Grandma, if you're out there, I know, now I get it. <laughs> it also reminds me of once I had this job here in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and I worked for a company that was on the East Coast, so every once in a while, you know, coworkers would have to come out for various reasons and, um, you know, cover my desk for me when I went on vacation. I was the only one out here that worked in that company. Um, but one, I remember one time I was hanging out with this guy and we were out, I think in a parking lot or something, and the wind was blowing in the summer and it's hot, hot wind. I, I don't know how to describe it. It's only a phenomenon I've experienced in the desert. This, you can't see it, <laughs> but this is hot wind. Hot, hot wind. When the wind's hot, you know it's gonna be good. My plan is just to get to the base of these. Say we were here, get a couple snapshots and get back to the car. Forget about it. Oh my God. I'll pause for a second. Now that I'm up on them, we saw them from a distance and they looked huge. The closer I get to them, they're not as huge as I thought, but there could be more on the other side that we don't see, I don't know. That, though, is pretty tall. That's taller than anything at Mesquite Sand Dunes, I think, in Death Valley, which is the one where I climbed to the top of one of those. I couldn't imagine doing that right now. Especially going in sand, because walking up sand is the worst. It's like one step forward, three steps back up those steep sand dunes. So this is a winter, early morning or sunset activity, for sure. I forgot to consult a map. I don't know what those mountains are there, the name of the mountains, but they're really big, really pretty. And looking off this way, it's hard to see now, but there's, I think a fire. Like there's some mountains over there. I know there are clouds too, but there definitely is a fire, some smoke coming out of there. So uh, one of the two or three fires I've seen so far this year in my travels, kind of a common occurrence in the desert. You just come to expect it, unfortunately. Okay, I take it back, they're big. They're big. <laughs> and I think I am close to where I said I was going to go. Which, like I said, I'm doing more than I thought. I thought I was just gonna go to the parking lot, take a couple pictures, but at least you're getting this. And the heat, and I didn't bring my hiking boots, so getting sand in my shoes I wasn't really wanting to do right now. But I saw this area from the car. This is gonna do. This is all I got. I can't believe I'm saying that, being the completionist that I am usually, but here we are, the Kelso Sand Dunes. So pleased I finally made it, but I think this is enough. That's all I can endure, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just a quick in and out. Back to the car, I think by the time we get to our other destinations, it'll be later in the afternoon, hopefully. And not so freaking hot. All right, I'm gonna back on out of here now and say goodbye to the sand dunes. So usually on this channel, when I do get something done, sometimes I'll be like, another one checked off the list. One could say this, I've been here, I'm here at the sand dunes right now, but I'm not gonna say I'm gonna check it off the list yet. 
what I intended on doing was hiking up to the top of the dunes when I came here and I didn't really even consider the heat. So while we were here, maybe it's a half check or something. Um, but we could do better than that. We will come back. Trust me one day. My goal is to hit all the major sand dunes in America and hike to their, the top of the dunes. So I could say I did. And this is one of the ones that I'd have to do. All right. Well, let's head uh, towards Needles, California now. I guess seeing a lot of the episode from the car or the truck isn't too bad, is it? I mean, it's kind of fun to go for rides once in a while and see the country. Things that you don't get to see every day, like the Kelso sand dunes. They're pretty cool. Although I do like other ones better, like the ones in Death Valley. Like the area where it is, it just seems more sandy. Like this, there's a lot of like creosote bushes growing up into the dunes. Like, and then at the very top, it's very clear. So they're beautiful, but I kind of like more minimalistic ones that have less shrubbery intertwined in them. I'm a dune snob. All right, I've turned back onto Cal Baker Road in the Mojave National Preserve, waving goodbye to the sand dunes. You guys can't see them, but they're there. Bye, we'll be back. And we have about 15 miles to go to Interstate 40. 90 miles total, one hour and 20 minutes estimated, 3.31 p.m. arrival time at our next stop, which is something called the Topak or Topic Maze. This over here is kind of a unique looking area, these really craggly peaks, you can see part of them. I think there's a view area here maybe. Is that what this is? It's the uh, viewpoint parking. It's good enough for a viewpoint, it's good enough for me, and even if there wasn't a parking lot here, I was trying to find a way to stop, because this is spectacular over here. Very pretty. We drove from the other side of it. I was like, eh, I kind of want to stop, but it didn't seem convenient. Then we wrapped around this side, and there's a parking lot, so I thought this is really interesting. It's just kind of unique. There wasn't a lot of this in the preserve like that, really big, I assume granite mountains here and you got uh, more boulders kind of reminiscent of Joshua Tree National Park. I mean we're not terribly far from Joshua Tree so I would imagine it's a lot of the same geology that you would find in Joshua Tree. Albeit this side I see a lot of yucca. I don't think I see any full-fledged Joshua trees back here. So this is pretty cool. Now that I'm over here unless it's just cooler over here I can tell you it's not as brutal as the dunes mainly because I don't think this surface is as reflective as that sand was. Um, but I bet if you were climbing up on those rocks, it would be hot. <laughs> mainly just wanted to come very quickly and show you this because you weren't going to be able to see it full, full on from the car. So kind of supplementing what the GoPros can do the way I have the mountain mounted. Not planning on spending a ton of time here. Just wanted a quick pull over, admire the beautiful yucca and granite landscape. All right, I'm just going to document, I think, this drive through the preserve. I just want to, I wanted to do this, just drive through it once. And here we are, just to say that I did it. All right, I think we see the other, one of the Mojave National Preserve signs. There's a green truck parked out in front of it, uh, signifying our, I would say, official exit out of the preserve. I would say let's just make sure that's indeed what it is. It is. It's a replica of the same one we already saw. I would get out on foot and film it, but there's a guy sitting right there, so I'm not going to. That's good enough for me anyway. I've had enough <laughs> of being outside for a while. Um, we'll call it when we get on the highway, maybe. That'll be the official we did it. So I can confirm it then that Kelso Sand Dunes is not right off the highway, but it's not too far if you're coming on Interstate 40. In a quarter mile, turn left onto the I-40 East ramp. All right, I am going to, and uh, I'm ready. I'm gonna, pretty much after we get on the highway here, I'm gonna hang up for a little bit and then kind of beeline for the next location. So I'm excited about it, but I think I'd like to have like an hour, we got about an hour and six minutes till we get there. Just some nice peace and quiet and the cool off and to just not have to talk and talk and talk. Turn left so. onto the I-40 East Road. Wow, look at the view though, before I turn like straight ahead off into the desert. We're still pretty high up. 
in elevation compared to what I see off in the distance. All right, I-40 East. Merge onto I-40 East. Let's do it. All right, we're about 1.8 miles away from the exit that I need to take to go see this uh, Topic um, maze, as it's known. It'll make sense when you see it. I am pretty sure, but my latest concern is this. According to my uh, car's temperature reading, it's currently 118 degrees. I saw it get up as high as 119 degrees um, driving down here. <laughs> That's hot. I don't care if it's a dry heat or not. <laughs> That's uh, hot. I'd be very surprised if we come across any other fellow adventures out here today, man. If there are, they gotta be crazy like me, because, uh, woo, is it hot. I feel like I need to document this for posterity. 118, 3.39 p.m., end of July, the Mojave Desert in California. How do you like me now? Oh my God, that's hot. You can say dry heat, you know? There's some validity to that at some point. You could say, oh, well, you know, humidity makes it really bad. There's a little bit of that here today too, but not like that Florida humidity I've been saying all day. But there comes a point, you know, <laughs> where it don't matter anymore, humid or not, 118 just burns hot. So the maze kind of continues. It's called a maze. It's not really a maze, I heard. But people here, probably the white man came in here, I'm guessing, at some point and saw this early on and said, oh, it's a maze, like as if you could walk and do that. But apparently it's not. However, I think it's believed that these are some kind of geoglyphs or things that natives created here, um, perhaps of the Mojave tribe, which lived all up and down the Colorado River Something I, I want to explore, there's some petroglyphs and stuff off the river, uh, but somewhere off the river that was the same tribe that um, didn't originally abduct the Oatman girls from the Oatman massacre, but they were traded or given to the Mojave tribe. So the Oatman girls live somewhere along the Colorado River, I'm not saying like right here, but you know, somewhere probably out here. It's the land uh, of the people they ended up hanging out with. But anyway, the Topic, maze. Okay, a couple things that this interpretive sign point out is they do give a lot of credit here to the Mojave Nation, uh, the Mojave people, their ancestors uh, are thought to have done this and all it says is this is thought to be a place where warriors would uh, purify themselves um, before continuing home after battle. And apparently it was much more extensive than it is the highway is like right down there, Interstate 40, so they destroyed some of this when they constructed the highway. But you can see the Colorado River, and as it mentions, you know, that was a lifeline to the people. The, site, the sign makes it sound like it, the Colorado, where is it here, was like much wider. They said miles wide, I, I doubt that. But um, I'm sure it was wider back then than it is today with all the dams and reservoirs and stuff up and down here. But you still can see it very important to those people. All right, because it's so gosh dang hot here, I didn't really do my own extensive research. <laughs> and this is all about I got intelligent to say other than maybe flying the drone around a little bit. Um, I'm going to refer you to another video that I actually watched in preparation for this for one of the channels Amy and I really enjoy a lot, uh, Sidetrack Adventures. Um, I was watching a video on this just to kind of educate myself. He has a, some other facts and things of interest to see. I'm just going to link to that down below and let him do the work <laughs> because holy moly. I don't know if I've ever experienced this kind of heat. I must have been being in Phoenix, but maybe I wasn't out in it during the time. Because why would you want to be? And normally this stuff gets me all excited. And I think this is our first geoglyph here on the channel might be my first geoglyph of all time for me too 
so it's something cool to see. <laughs> but I'm just doing everything I can to last another minute or two out here to share this with you. All right, now I'm departing the Topic Maze. Topic, Topic, Topak, I don't know. And we're heading to the Rio del Sol Inn in Needles, California. I actually could see it from the highway. Looks kind of like the pictures, but it does look kind of sketch, right. you know, compared to a lot of other places, but it got really good reviews. So kind of like the Sands, you know, another place that's insanely cheap. Looks sketch, but the rooms look updated nice and it just gets really good reviews. All right, I have checked into my room, room 111 here at the Rio del Sol, Needles, California, right off the interstate. I chose it because Hotels.com, the ratings were, I would say abundant and very good. I want to say this place got nines and the guy that checked me in in here was awesome. Like very informative, polite. Um, and I think I, I saw this place from the back out on the highway. So I was like, ah, oh, it looks kind of scary, but it's not. It's like the pictures. So room 111 is, uh, is this it right here? I think I'm right here, actually. I don't even know if anybody's swimming, it's so hot here, but there's a pool that I can use, which I might actually. It's open at 9.30 a.m. and closes at 10. And does that look refreshing or what? I might have to, uh, I rarely swim because I never have time, but today's the day. I think that we need to consider that. So folks, you're gonna have to take my word for it, but when I drove up and pulled in here, last temperature check was 119. Went up a degree, it's about the four o'clock hour now, so it's the hottest part of the day. And my legs, the, the hairs on my legs are getting singed off as I speak. And there's the sign, the Rio del Sol, right off of Interstate 40. It's like an old Days Inn or something, maybe that was converted, like a chain hotel kind of thing it looks. But so far, I've seen inside the room and I'm pleased. I could see why it was reviewed well. All right, folks, I'm gonna kind of leave you in the same spot that I was this morning, albeit in a different town, outside of my hotel room, and about 10, 15 degrees hotter <laughs> than what it was. I can't do any more. I have hit my limit, but I had a blast. We drove from Boulder City, Nevada, down to Needles, California, ultimate road trip, one day, hot, hot heat. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.